Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. It's 3 o'clock on Tuesday. Congrats on making it through Monday. I'm your Go Local Live host, Rachel Noons. Our first guest today is Maria Much. She's a local author, and she's here to tell us about her, her new book. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about your new book, When We Were Birds. It's a um, short stories that have a surreal tone to them, uh, and three of them are based on fairy tales. Uh, such as Red Riding Hood, there's a Sleeping Beauty version, and uh, the story of Bluebeard, which we were just talking about and how, how dark the original tale is. Um, so mine is a contemporary version and um, definitely a little on the dark side. That's, uh, that's perfectly fine and cool to dig into some lesser known, lesser known stories. And, were you inspired by the fairy tales themselves, or how how'd you get the idea for this book? I started with the Red Riding Hood story, and uh, I read the, there's a wonderful um, British author, Angela Carter, and people who are into their fairy tales um, and literary fiction know Angela Carter very well. She wrote a wonderful collection called In the Company of Wolves, and the title story is her version of Red Riding Hood, and it's absolutely wonderful and lush, and um, it was really inspiring. So that led me to do a bunch of research. I read uh, some really great background information on the history of Red Riding Hood and just how the early versions were really bawdy and um, very really? um, yeah, ver verging on the pornographic. Oh, and, yeah, very um, and French. <laughs> um, and of course, French. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, right. <laughs> and um, so uh, they were just um, the history is really fascinating. So. Um, I started with that one, and that story, I wouldn't say that writing typically just pops out, at least it doesn't for me. It's definitely a process and sometimes um, a pretty long one, but that particular story just came out almost whole, and uh, that was the first one. So then I started uh, veering into Bluebeard and Sleeping Beauty. Um, and, then, and then started thinking about other types of strangeness and, and the way that our world is um, so surreal uh, without, you know, it's just, it's just naturally surreal and our, our existence here is so fascinating. And so then I started riffing on um, sort of general, um, uh, you know, stories that were not fairy tale based but have some surreal aspect to them. Similar themes. Yeah, similar themes. So it's it's interesting. It, it seems there's always seems to be a new retelling of, of these classic stories, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, all, all of these classic fairy tales we grew up with. There's always a new approach either through the movies or I remember when I was younger reading um, what was called politically correct fairy tales that was right. uh, I remember very, that, yeah. very overblown yeah. humor yeah. point of view for, yeah. uh, for it. And why do you think we, we keep going back to these, to these classic ancient stories. What, what do you think draw, keeps drawing us back to, to retell it? Um, I, I think that they have, they ha those stories have an initial drive to them, which is why they've, they've lasted, which is why people told them in, within their families and in their social circles over and over. And each time they were told, they would change them and um, add to them and embellish. And of course, they, they change and grow over time. Um, and they're extremely inviting because you can go into some very dark places in a kind of safe way. They also invite humor. Um, they're, um, they're also interesting because everyone knows the basic story. That's true. So that's part of what's fun about um, changing people's expectations. So you play with the details, and there's automatically this wonderful opportunity for surprise. Absolutely, yeah, that's a, that's a, great, a great point. And so the, the title, When We Were Birds, does that come from, you said the first story is uh, talking about a, wom uh, a peregrine falcon turns into a woman. Is that where the title comes from? Uh, birds feature throughout in some sense, or winged creatures, um, and from there, the idea of transformation. So there is a story where a winged creature is uh, found on an ocean shore, 
uh, who's believed to be a famous musician. For people who are interested in classical music, it's, uh, it's a riff on Glenn Gould. So he is um, he's discovered, or someone who they think is Glenn Gould, um, with a set of wings. Um, and he's held captive by villagers, and they sort of exploit his, his fame and try to figure out who he really is. Um, so that's, that's one. Um, there is a story where um, a baby grows a feather from her neck, and that's actually based on a true uh, incident. There was really? a, there was a baby um, just a few years ago, I think in Kansas City, if I remember correctly, who sprouted a feather from her neck. Oh wow! And um, the <laughs> her bewildered parents I'm took sure. her to, to the pediatrician, <laughs> and um, uh, you know the pediatrician determined that uh, probably the baby had swallowed a feather and the feather got stuck and emerged through her neck, kind of like a piece of shrapnel, I guess. That's um, fascinating. <laughs> I loved that story. I thought that was so um, absolutely intriguing and so, you know, it, it would have all kinds of different connotations depending on your belief system, absolutely, where yeah. you live, etc. cetera. So um, I, I took that as a launch point for one of the stories, although uh, my version has nothing to do with the actual people that that, of that, that happened to. Yeah. Great. And uh, so, tell us where where can we get this this fabulous beach read? Uh, you can. It's published by Simon and Schuster Canada. Um, you can get it uh, anywhere down here in in the U.S. from your favorite uh, bookseller. But uh, if you are shopping local, and I hope you are, um, uh, Wakefield Books in Wakefield has signed copies. Great, and you know it's it's always great to support local businesses, and yeah. who doesn't want to sign a copy of uh, of their favorite summer book? <laughs> so uh, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about some of your past works. Uh, so this is my first book of fiction, but it's actually my second book. My first one uh, is Know the Night, and it's a memoir, uh, and it focuses on my son, my older son, who has Down syndrome and autism and uh, went through a period of staying awake at night. Uh, you know, it was about a two-year period where we didn't sleep very much at all. Oh, wow. Um, and our world, speaking of the surreal, became very surreal because of that. Um, but that book um, I brought into the story to sort of expand on, on his story, the, um, the, the Antarctic explorer Admiral Richard Byrd who was down in um, Antarctica in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a wonderful um, book that he wrote called Alone, based on his experience of being in the Antarctic and barely surviving. And I had read that during that period that I was awake with my son. And I just loved it. And it was a, a book that uh, really made me feel less alone. and so. Um, I, I incorporated his story into the story of my son. And you can definitely see the, see the parallels there between, you know, feeling like you're, you're by yourself and down Absolutely. in the Antarctic you get the long, long periods of darkness and the long periods of light as well. So you can definitely uh, see the parallels there and it, it, it sounds absolutely fascinating. Thank you. We'll have to check that out. And so what's, uh, what, what's next for you now that now that When We Were Birds is available to the public, are you working on something new? I am. I'm working on a novel. Wonderful. So, so there, there's a joke among people who know me that I'm just going to do one of everything. You know, <laughs> one, one book of, of poetry. There you uh, go. Recipe you know, book. A, right. Exactly. exactly. Textbook. Book. Hey, you just gave me an idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, well, stay tuned. Maybe there'll be a recipe <laughs> book <laughs> down the line a little bit. So uh, do, you, uh, do you know what, what the novel is going to be about yet? Or? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, the, the central story in the novel began as one of the stories in When We Were Birds. Um, it's not there anymore. I took it out once the, uh, you'll hear a lot of people uh, say this who write novels that um, often they begin as short stories. And then the, it just grows and grows. And you realize that the thing that you have is not a short story at all, but something much, much bigger needs and more, more complex. <laughs> it needs more room. So uh, yes, it's, it started in here, but then got 
got taken out and so now it, it's got its own space. And would you say it's it's easier or it's harder to write a novel as opposed to a short story? Because I've, I've heard from friends of mine who are writers that I've heard both. I've heard, you know, writing a novel, it's it's a little easier. You have more room to flesh out, and you, short story, you feel kind of constrained. But I've also heard, oh, no, short stories are easy. You just write them, and then that's that. So, <laughs> no, I've, I've heard both. Yeah, they're, short stories are, are not easy. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, I'm most, sure. If there's any short story writers listening, they're going, no, it's not easy. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there is something uniquely uh, perplexing that can happen with a short story. But f uh, I have to say, for me, I'm not really um, uh, tied down too much to genre in the sense that uh, it's, it's all, it's not, it's not that it's all the same exactly, but writing is writing, and you sort of go with the form that arrives. Variations on a theme. Right, right. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Maria. We really appreciated having you. And you can get When We Were Birds anywhere um, online, or if you want a signed copy, you can head down to South County, check out Wakefield Books, and uh, stay tuned for her next novel and recipe book and textbook <laughs> and music book and whatever comes next after that. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll be right back with our next guest here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. Thank you.